Jesus opens his Sermon on the Mount with a group of sayings that we know as the Beatitudes. They are loved by and familiar to Christians across the world. Loved, but not always liked. Familiar, but not always understood. We will be looking at each one of them over the course of the next few weeks. So today is intended as an introduction to them. What exactly are they? Can we think of them as some sort of manifesto, the sort of thing that a political party issues just before an election, something you might find on the side of a bus, for example? Some people do describe them like this, as Jesus' manifesto. Well, if they are a manifesto, they are of a very odd sort. Usually a manifesto is what a party promises it will do, once it is in power. But there's a transaction. You need to vote for that party to get them in power so that they can do, or not do, the things they have promised. Jesus certainly promises blessings and says what the blessing will bring. But the things required by us for the blessing are far too much for it to be a mere transaction. We are asked to be poor in spirit, a mourner, meek, hungering and thirsting for righteousness, merciful, pure in heart, peacemakers, prepared to be persecuted. They are much more than just touting for votes. It's much better to describe them as rules for living in the kingdom of heaven. So to understand what the Beatitudes are, we have to understand what Jesus means by the kingdom of heaven. Jesus mentions the kingdom of heaven right at the end of the Beatitudes, though in fact he's always talking about it in his parables, his arguments with the Pharisees, even as he prepares to die on a cross. And it's no surprise that he does, because all the prophecies about him also talk about it. The reading from Isaiah that we take at Christmas and know so well tells us that he will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it. Mary says the same thing when the angel Gabriel speaks to her. So what is his kingdom? In Jesus' time, a kingdom would have gone hand in hand with a king, someone with complete authority over an area of land, who had the power of life and death over all his subjects. Even today, when we don't have kings in the same way, we still think of countries as places where a leader is in charge and responsible, where laws bring justice, where an army and police forces give us protection, and where we have certain rights and privileges because we are citizens. Well, that isn't a bad place to start. And certainly, in the kingdom of heaven, we have a king or leader who has complete authority over their territory. But what is their territory? Now we have to start thinking differently. The kingdom of heaven works differently to kingdoms on earth. The first thing we must recognise about it is that it is not a physical territory. The disciples really struggled with this idea. They thought that Jesus would overthrow the Roman occupiers and establish God's reign in Israel. But the truth that Jesus kept telling them is that the kingdom of God was inside them and inside us. The kingdom of heaven is not a piece of land. It is us. We talk about living in the kingdom of heaven, but it is actually God living in us. The Holy Spirit dwells in us, and that is the territory that our King, Jesus, rules and where he rules from. So, having thought about the kingdom of heaven, let's go back to the Beatitudes. I call them the rules for living in the kingdom. Jesus says that these show that we are part of the kingdom if we exhibit these traits. But remember what they are. Poor in spirit, meek, merciful, etc. How do we obtain or obey them? They're not exactly things that you can take and examine. You can't get an A plus for being poor in spirit, and if you did, you wouldn't boast about it, I hope. And you can't get an honours degree in mercy. You can't have a law that says everyone should be meek. 
You can't expect the police to arrest anyone who isn't pure in heart, or the army to enforce mourning across the country. No, the kingdom of heaven works very differently to any kingdom or country that we know on earth. But that is because its king works in a very different way to any other leader on earth. This king did not strive for power, but gave up absolutely everything. He surrendered being part of the Godhead by being born in a stable on earth. He submitted himself to the laws on earth and spent his time with the poor and disadvantaged. He sacrificed his life on a cross to take the punishment that we all should have taken. And having done all that, he gave freely to us all the benefits that that brought, a new and full life in him. And we don't have to do anything difficult to have that new life. All we have to do is accept his invitation to live in his kingdom. But in entering into a new life with him, we become his disciples. And as his disciples, he expects us to take on a set of attitudes that are summed up in the Beatitudes. And that sounds like really hard work. Having not had to do anything to get into heaven, it looks like we have to work really hard to stay there. What is the point of someone paying the initial entrance fee for us when the annual subscription is crippling? Being poor in spirit, being meek and pure in heart, mourning for this world, hungering and thirsting for righteousness, being merciful and a peacemaker, and being prepared to be persecuted, are the characteristics of Jesus. And we cannot do any of these things by our own efforts. We cannot achieve them by passing exams, obeying laws, or hoping that someone else might do it for us. Only the power of the Holy Spirit living in us can help us to do this. And it's why Jesus says we are blessed when we show these attributes. Blessed comes from a Greek word, makarios. It means happy, but it means so much more. It doesn't mean being happy for 30 minutes. We can be happy when we enjoy a nice meal, but we will be hungry again. We can be happy after a great comedy programme, until someone passes on some sad news. The happiness that Jesus offers is permanent. It is an assurance that we cannot be separated from Jesus. And we cannot be separated from Jesus because we have the Holy Spirit living within us. The same Holy Spirit who is working in us so that we become more and more like Jesus. As we journey through these Beatitudes through the next few weeks, my prayer for all of us is twofold. Firstly, that we will be challenged by them, challenged to become more like Jesus. And secondly, that we will be comforted by the knowledge that we are blessed because we have the guiding hand of the Father on us, the love of the Son in our lives and the presence of the Holy Spirit in our hearts. Amen. <laughs>